G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. I've spent all my YouTube and Patreon and sponsorship money on a new piece of equipment for the observatory. Kept it under wraps for a, a while now, but uh, I don't make much money, but I make a little bit of money off all of these little extras from doing YouTube. So let me show you what I bought. Are you ready? Wow! Hello. This is Mitty. <laughs> She's just woken up. It's actually very difficult to expose for a black dog. You can see everything else in the image is completely washed out. Oh my gosh, you are just adorable. I am dead. Oh. I was on the uh, astrophotography discord the other day talking to you guys and uh, told you about my dog and you guys posted a lot of photos of your little astro dogs as well so it turns out owning a dog is as ubiquitous as being a musician in the astro community so obviously i'm going to change the name of the observatory uh, from now on i'm going to call it the black dog observatory trevor jones FaceTime audio bruh bruh Bruh. 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 <laughs> Bruh. 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 I just want you to know that uh, even though I have a dog, I'm not going to be one of those annoying YouTube channels that anthropomorphizes the dog and puts human emotions into the dog's mind. Oh, <laughs> it's just undignified really. And I won't be talking to the dog in a silly, condescending voice either. Isn't that right? Anyway, the uh, Rasa is now on and balanced. I'm not sure if I've got the back focal distance right or anything yet. Um, so I think tomorrow night's going to be good weather. He's a good girl. He's a good girl. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. Uh, October is a pretty dull month in the skies here over Australia right now. Formal Holt is basically directly up and Helix is there, but I've done Helix. I've done Helix to death. Uh, there seems to be like a giant void around that area though. It's not very interesting, particularly if you're looking for nebulosity. Uh, so I've trained my sights on Andromeda. And I thought, let's see how high it is. And it gets to about 20, 21 degrees around here because I'm fairly north in Australia. However, I had a huge shrub right next to the observatory, which was blocking the view. I tried to look at it and I just could see glimpses of stars through the trees. I couldn't actually see it properly. So I did what all good astronomers do. I got the pulse all around. Now I've had a couple of good nights getting data. I've got broadband luminance data, R, G and B, so I should be ready to process this image now. And by the way, I've been streaming on Twitch. So if you're just joining us, I've been streaming on Twitch lately. I'm a total beginner at this. I don't really know what I'm doing. But I figure if I'm going to be doing this from night to night anyway, I'll just try to share what I'm doing. It's not like my videos where I can just do 10 minutes of solid bang, bang, bang information. Uh, you can see the long, arduous, often quite boring process of doing astrophotography. And hopefully um, you'll get something out of it. 
and if not, you can just hang out and drink beer with me. Now I'm back to using the Rasa 11. I did try using the ZWO Mini Guide Scope. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. That's this guy right here. You would have seen me in the montage uh, putting this on the Rasa 11. Now, I have used this to great success with the Rasa 8 inch, but it just didn't perform as well with the Rasa 11 inch. This is a 120 millimeter focal length, so quite a wide view of the stars to guide on. And though it works, I wasn't getting the sub arc second guiding that I really wanted for this project. It probably would have worked fine, but it works a bit better with a traditional longer focal length guide scope. So I'm back to the 400 millimeter Celestron guide scope package. I'll leave the links for both of these things down below. for the moment we've all been waiting for and did this actually work i can see reasonable data in the red green and blue channels and luminance is looking good uh, so this should be pretty simple let's recombine these with channel combination just a simple rgb map to rgb and go and let's stretch boom come on Okay, so being this low on the horizon, it's not going to be as colour correct as I would hope. It's obviously dipping down into that thick atmosphere. This is why we have orange sunsets, because the blue and green light get really scattered, leaving us with this red hot mess. Can we save it? better than a poke in a bum with a burnt stick, isn't it? I honestly thought this wouldn't turn out this good, but that's pretty decent. Uh, there's some problems, there's some issues, but God knows I have issues too, and so do you. Thanks for watching, and thanks for joining me on stream if you were keeping me company during these long, lonely nights. I will be back on stream drinking and taking photos of space soon. So, as always, thanks for watching. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.